I would say it's kind of a, a been a very confident group since spring training. You know, there's some very strong personalities in that clubhouse, veteran guys. Um, it's it's kind of wound a bit tight, but there there certainly was no lack of self belief in this team. Mm-hmm. Dan, you've been around teams occasionally that have gone into death spirals. Uh, I have too, and so has Jeff. Do you think that there's any element of that with this team right now? I think there might be a little bit. And, and you know, back at the beginning of the year, I would actually use the word cocky more than confident. And, and I think confident is a better attribute than cocky most of the time. So I think they probably came out of spring training feeling they had unfinished business from last year and they were good enough to do it. And they're not wrong. Uh, and then starting pitching overachieved all year, and I think they probably even got more confident. Even though the one loss record, they never, re- they didn't really get going until the middle of the season. But but right now, I don't know if it's a lack of confidence. It feels to me in some corners like almost a sense of resignation. Like, yeah. oh, well, we did mm-hmm. everything we could, but it's not. May- maybe it's not meant to be. And you know, you'd like. And, and again, these are very difficult things to make. Um, judgments on from the outside. So, but you you'd like to see some more fight, and and I don't know exactly how you you know how you define that fight. Where is it? You know, Russell Martin went down the line yesterday. He was thrown out, but he dove headfirst into first base. Which, leaving aside whether or not that's actually quicker or not, that I thought it was a great play. I think it showed. I think it showed people he cares. For a catcher to dive headfirst into first base to try to beat out a ground ball is great. Um, you'd like to see more fire from the team, and I've seen frustration. But uh, you'd like to see a little more, uh, you know, fight in the positive direction. And again, sometimes it's not something that you can see from the outside that easily. And sometimes it's not something you know until you see it. But we've all seen teams who have fought through adversity and managed to overcome things. And, and um, I, I guess you'd like to see a little bit more of that. From well, and right again, now. my in the situations when I've been around teams that started, you know, good teams or decent teams that started to crumble, what happened was guys sitting at their lockers were looking at other guys saying, well, you know, I'm doing my job, but right. buddy over here, you know, is I'm wondering if there's any of that going on. Uh, I don't see it, uh, but but something about the the chemistry in the room feels a little strange. Um, I don't think it's terrible, but I don't think it's exceptional. And um, I, I think when you've got a team that has flaws, and all of these contending teams have flaws, sometimes I think the intangibles can be the difference between whether or not you make it and whether or not you don't. And and you know there are a lot of strong personalities in the room. There are a lot of guys whose contracts are up at the end of the year. There have been some distractions, and I think that can I think that can have an impact on the team. I, I have haven't really felt a lot of finger pointing in terms of like the starting pitchers saying, "Hey, bullpen, get it done," or the pitchers saying, "Hey, offense, get it done." I, I haven't really felt that, but um, that room is a little—it's quiet when, when you mm-hmm. walk in there. I mean, I, I, you know, I get a chance to walk into all kinds of clubhouses from the games that I do on Sundays. This is a quiet clubhouse. Now, it's a big room too. It's one of the bigger rooms that you'll be in, and some teams are actually going away from the giant clubhouses and making them a little more intimate to try to generate a little more comfort camaraderie but but boy sometimes you walk in there and you just don't hear very much no it's a it's a great point and you know i know it's something you know those of us who've been in the clubhouse have talked about how how different it was or how different it is i mean a lot of that i think has to do with david price's absence I and i have to admit you know what I, I was one of those people i thought it was great when he was here uh but you know the whole david price chemistry thing I, that that's a little overstated there's enough you know, Troy Tulowitzki, Josh Donaldson, uh, there's enough leaders in here, yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera. Dan, it, 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 it really does lack something. It really does. I've been in, I mean, I've been in bad, bad in clubhouses with teams that were just horrible. I mean, bad Montreal Expos teams. It wasn't, or, or it's never, it was never as quiet as this clubhouse yeah, is. No, this this never. is one of the quietest I've ever been in. And, and uh, I'm used to, and again, maybe there's a difference. I usually walk in there on a Sunday afternoon as opposed to, you mm-hmm. know, for, for ESPN, as opposed to a weeknight for the Jays. And on Sunday afternoon, you've got ball games on or football games on. So that generates, you know, the TVs are really going. So that yeah. generates a little more noise in a clubhouse. You walk in a Tuesday at 3 in the afternoon, there's there's not much on TV. There's, But you, do, you don't see many guys. And I think leadership um, and noise aren't necessarily the same thing. But, you know, David Price was a presence in the clubhouse. Ben Revere, kind of like a Devin Travis, you know, just another guy bouncing around happy all the time. That was a good thing. Um, as silly as it sounds, when Munenori Kawasaki was up with the team over the last few years, he, I think he meant something. You know, and it's some, some people would roll their eyes, but he's bouncing around the clubhouse too, having fun. But right now, uh, I don't think there's finger pointing, but I think some guys have a lot of things on their minds. You know, and, and 
you know, it's good to hear they came out of a meeting and talked about, you know, everybody getting their oars in the water at the same time. But why do you need to say everybody get their oars mm-hmm. in the water at the same time? That, that's so uh, to me, that's a good news, bad news kind of thing. And, and again, there's there are lots of things at play that we're not privy to not being, you know, part of the 25 man roster. And that's that's the way that it should be. But it, it just doesn't feel to me like they're all fighting the same. Thing. Well, and you know what, Dan, there's a, like there's a lot of different kinds of teams that can win, you know, mm-hmm. like a lot of different personalities in a team that can win. But. One thing I would say about this group, and, I, and I'm like Jeff, where, you know, I was I, the David Price, the hoverboards, the buying people bathrobes and eating popcorn. I kind of dismissed that stuff too. But you know what? They, this core group of this team is not a lot of fun. You know, if you, you look at Jose Bautista, Josh Donaldson, Russell Martin, Troy Tulowitzki, fun is not the first word that comes to mind with that, that crowd, is it? Yeah, no, I agree. And, and, and it's funny because um, I would think my personality is such that I would feel the same as you guys do, that all the chemistry stuff is overblown. And I, and I actually feel the opposite. And, and, mm-hmm. and I think it's big. And I think it's bigger in this sport than it is in any other sport because of the relentless nature of the schedule. I think if things go bad, when you have to look at the same guy every single day and you go through the same routine every single day, you know, nobody says the dog days of hockey or the dog days of football, but they're the dog days of, of, of baseball. It's just such a long season. I mean, sometimes, and you guys cover it every single year, sometimes by the end of spring training, it feels like August. It feels like it's gone on forever. So I think something good can really get good and something bad can really get bad. And I'm not saying there's something bad on this team. I just don't know that there's something about this team uh, chemistry wise that is really helping them right now and and it feels to me like it's a bit of a struggle right now you know then again they go out and they score 12 runs tonight and and uh, and Hap looks great and you know maybe that's the start of something good and that's the other thing about baseball is it can change on a dime and none of us know why 